Hello everyone. My name is André Zenner. I'm a PhD student in computer science at the Saarland Informatics Campus in Saarbrücken, Germany and a researcher at the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence. In the next minutes, I'd like to introduce to you my PhD topic Enhancing Proxy-Based Haptics in Virtual Reality. My PhD topic is about the technique of passive haptic feedback, which is the idea of leveraging so-called haptic proxies to enhance interaction in virtual reality. As most of you might know, the idea is pretty simple when the user tries to reach out and touch and interact with a virtual object in passive haptics, this virtual object is physically represented by a so-called haptic proxy object. When the haptic proxy is well chosen, the user can feel an appropriate shape, size, weight, texture or temperature that corresponds to the virtual object and highly realistic feedback can be delivered. This comes at a very low complexity and low cost, for example, compared to alternative techniques such as active haptic feedback. However, in order to work well, passive haptic feedback has two central requirements which need to be fulfilled. First, the physical object needs to be haptically similar to the virtual object. And secondly, the physical and virtual objects need to be sufficiently co-located. These two central requirements lead to the idea of passive haptic feedback being very inflexible if implemented in a naive way because each change in the virtual environment would trigger a change and manual adaptation of the physical space. And so the goal of my PhD research now is to enhance and investigate techniques that try to overcome the drawback of passive haptic feedback, which is its inflexibility. For this, my research is split up into four main areas, which I like to overview in the following minutes. My first research area is passive haptic feedback itself. In this area, I'm applying the concept of passive haptics to different application domains, for example, to the domain of immersive data analysis. In this paper, which is a TVCG paper that I'm going to present here later in the conference, we implemented a system that translates a 2D graph structure representing a business process model into an immersive 3D virtual representation of the graph in virtual reality. The user can then move from the beginning of the process to the end of the process through the graph by visiting a set of different floating and room scale function and connector platforms, as we can see here on the right hand side of the slide. To enhance the interaction as the user moves through the data visualization, we implement the passive haptic feedback and let the user tangibly interact with different objects in the virtual scene, such as, for example, the information packages, as we can see here in the screenshot, and different interactive modules. We could also show that the addition of passive haptic feedback actually brought benefits to the experience as we could see that user interest was significantly enhanced when we use virtual reality and passive props compared to using a standard exploration interface. Next, I'd like to introduce to you the first main research area I'm concerned with that actually tries to overcome the drawbacks of passive haptic feedback. This is first the idea of physical manipulation. In this research area, I'm looking at the problem of mismatching haptic properties and how we can solve it by aligning the haptic properties of real and virtual objects. For this, in past research, we proposed a technique that we call dynamic passive haptic feedback. The idea of dynamic passive haptics is to combine passive props and simple actuation to build dynamic props that use the actuators now not to actively exert forces on the user, but instead just to reconfigure the props so that their passive haptic feedback properties change. Such dynamic props are able to, for example, change their size, shape, weight or weight distribution in order to adapt their feedback to represent a large variety of different virtual objects realistically. Besides introducing the concept of dynamic passive haptics, we also proposed two different implementations of this concept, which was first Shifty that we can see here on the left hand side. This is a tubular prop that has an internal weight, which can be shifted using a simple stepper motor. By adjusting its mass distribution, the inertial properties of the prop can change in order to enhance the perception of different virtual objects differing in their, for example, length or thickness. More recently, 
We also introduced a second implementation of the dynamic passive haptic feedback concept, which is the shape and mass distribution changing controller called DragOn. The DragOn uses simple actuation to open and close two fans at the prop in order to change its resistance impressions felt by the user due to air resistance and inertial drag. By this, Dragon can realistically represent a large variety of different virtual objects, for example, differing in their scale, in their material composition or their filling state. Besides studying how physical manipulation, so adaptation of the props can enhance virtual reality interaction, my third main research area is concerned with the technique of virtually manipulating how the user interacts with the virtual environment. Here we try to overcome the problem of insufficient collocation by studying techniques that bridge the spatial offsets between real and virtual objects, such as for example haptic retargeting. In this context, we studied the technique of body warping and contributed an estimate for how much hand redirection can go unnoticed by users even in worst case scenarios. We conducted a two alternative forced choice psychophysical experiment to estimate detection thresholds for horizontal, vertical and gain based hand redirection. Our results show that there indeed is a certain range of around 9 degrees for horizontal and vertical hand redirection that can go unnoticed even if users pay attention to detecting the hand offsets. For gain-based hand redirection, we likewise found that the virtual hand can be accelerated by up to 7% or decelerated by up to 12% without users noticing. This concludes the overview of my past PhD research efforts and finally I like to introduce to you my plans for my upcoming and remaining PhD research which is to combine both physical and virtual manipulation. In my future work I like to introduce a research experiment that showcases how a combination of dynamic passive haptics and hand redirection can better solve the problems of haptic similarity and prop collocation by combining both orthogonal research paths. For this, I like to showcase that the combination of both techniques can yield enhanced effect ranges larger than the effect ranges achievable with just the individual techniques and can better compensate for dislocated props better than the individual techniques could. And with this, I like to conclude my research overview and I will end with a slide that summarizes three important questions that I like to discuss here in the DC. First, I'm interested in further ideas how we can combine dynamic passive props and hand redirection to enhance virtual reality interaction. I'm also interested in further dynamic prop or controller designs that deliver better haptic feedback. And finally, I'm also always interested in techniques that enhance dynamic passive haptics and hand redirection individually. With this, I'd like to conclude my talk. So thank you very much for the interest and I'm now looking forward to our discussion.